The numbers are in showing just how warm 2021 ranks across the globe. Take a look. Last year was the sixth hottest year on record. In fact, as you can see, all of our top 10 hottest years have happened since 2000. Now this past year, global temperatures were just under two degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the beginning of the 20th century. This new data now added to the famous warming stripes graphic showing the human caused rise in global temperatures since 1850. NASA scientist Dr. Gavin Schmidt explains how satellites along with climate modeling are helping confirm the human part of this warming. It's not just that the surface is warming, the changes are being seen everywhere. And those changes have a unique fingerprint that tells us uh, that this is basically due to our activities. Bringing it down to a smaller scale, the U.S. just had the fourth warmest year on record. The continued warming contributing to billion dollar disasters from fire to floods to heat. Sacramento also saw temperatures up nearly two degrees. Again, all of this creating the extreme whiplash in our year to year or even season to season weather. This fall, we had record setting rain. Fairfield with the second wettest fall on record. Sacramento with the eighth wettest fall on record. This helped get us off to a big start to the wet season. Look how it helped green up the valley from uh, year to year. You can see the significant change here and deliver impactful snow to the Sierra. The latest readings showing we are over 100% of average throughout the Sierra. Rainfall also equally impressive with totals coming in anywhere from eight to over 16 inches throughout Northern California. And that puts places like San Francisco with over eight inches ahead of normal. But the winter whiplash is what creates a bigger problem and concern moving forward for our dry season and water availability. Look at this up and down pattern from wet to dry since October. This is also being documented in the Sierra. I was able to catch up with Andrew Schwartz from the Central Sierra Snow lab earlier this week to talk about their research regarding snow and climate change. Currently, I'm working on looking at the temperature trends, which are pretty clearly increasing, but we're also looking at trends in snowfall, but also in overall precipitation, which includes rain and snow. And what we want to try to find out from that is, are we getting less snow or are we getting more dense snow? You know, is there an actual shift towards rain or are we just getting that more and more heavy Sierra cement that is so common up here. This matters because that snow melts and fills our reservoirs. Now this typically happens in the spring. So right now we aren't seeing huge numbers of water coming into our water system, but it is looking much better than what we saw certainly at the uh, beginning of October. We're anywhere from about 40 to over 50% full right now, putting us anywhere from about 60 to over 100% of average. Today we got new drought monitor uh, release as well, showing dramatic improvements with no part of the state now in exceptional drought and only extreme drought covering about 1% of the state. This is what we look like at the beginning of the season. From week to week, the conditions aren't quite as dramatic, but an improvement nonetheless. And currently, we're in our mid-winter dry stretch, which is fairly typical. Right now, we're at about day 15. Last year, we had 22 days, and in 2014-15, during that last historic drought, we had 48 days without significant rainfall, and it looks like we'll be adding to that daily count as well with dry weather in the long range forecast, as well as above average temperatures.